This presentation will examine the binomial PDF and CDF commands. So here's an example. We want x to be a binomial random variable. n is 100 means we have 100 independent trials. And p equals 0.36 means that the probability of success on a given trial is 0.36. So of course, we could have said q, the probability of failure would be 0.64. What I want is I want the probability that x equals 42. So I have 100 games, and I want 42 winners. That should remind us how to get started with that probability. So the probability that x equals 42, 100 games, we want 42 winners. Probability of being a winner, 0.36. How many winners do we want? 42. Probability of being a loser is 0.64. How many losers do we want? Well, 100 games with 42 winners would mean we need 58 losers, and we will determine this probability by using Excel. So I have the values I need. I have 100 choose 42, which I'm going to write as equals combin of 100 comma 42. Very large number. Next, I need 0.36 to the 42, so equals 0.36 to the 42nd power. Then I need 0.64 to the 58th equals 0.64 to the 58th power. And now my probability is going to equal the product of all of these guys. Equals the product of these guys. And what do we have? We have 0.03752. So my probability of getting exactly 42 winners is 0.03752. Moving on, let's take a look at the Minitab PDF approach. So the command is simply PDF semicolon binomial 100.36. So PDF stands for probability distribution function semicolon binomial 100.36. And you'll notice what this gives us. It gives us a long string of numbers. And let's go to the top to see how they're labeled. It says binomial with n equals 100 and p equals 0.36. The first column is x, and the second column is the probability that x equals that little x. So again, here's our syntax. We wanted the probability x equals 42. So looking at our list, the probability that x equals 42 is going to be what? It's going to be this. So we see from Minitab that the probability that x equals 42 is equal to 0 0.03752, which agrees with what we had before. But if we examine the PDF, any probability you could want, going all the way down to 13. The probability of having 13 winners is this. The reason 12 isn't there is because it would be 0 to all the decimal places that the computer gives me. So if I want any probability from 13 up to 60, the PDF gives that to me. And the numbers beyond that range, of course, are just 0. Let's move on. If 50 people are in a room, what is the probability that fewer than six people have December birthdays? Well, this is a binomial experiment. n is 50. We're doing 50 independent trials. We have to ask ourselves, what's the probability of having a December birthday? We're going to choose to ignore leap year. If that's the case, there are 365 birthdays. And how many of those are December birthdays? 31 out of the 365. So our n here is 50, 50 independent trials. Our P, 31 winners out of 365. Q, losers, non-December birthdays, 334 out of 365. Notice if you add P and Q together, you get 1. Uh, Minitab doesn't really do well with fractions, so we'll put down our decimal approximations for P and Q as well. So what do we want to find? We want to find the probability that they're fewer than 6. Well, you can't have 5.8 people. So if we're fewer than 6 on this perspective, that is equivalent to the probability x is less than or equal to 5. That's what we're going to look for. And I claim that that answer is going to be 0.7513. So let's see if we can show ourselves why that's going to be the case. 
So here's our command. We're going to say CDF binomial 50 0.08493. So here's our appropriate syntax. When we let the computer run that syntax, we get all these numbers. And we are looking for the probability x is less than 6 or the probability x is less than or equal to 5. So looking up here, it says binomial with n equals 50, p equals 0.08493. I want the probability x is less than or equal to 5. So we can write that down and see that the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 looks like it equals how much? It equals 0 0.75127. And you can see how we get this answer. Probability x is less than 6 equals the probability x is less than or equal to 5, which is, again, about 0.7513. Now, we certainly could have done this long ways. We could have used all of our binomial probabilities to get 0 birthdays, 1 birthday, 2 birthdays, 3 birthdays, 4 birthdays, 5 birthdays, 6 birthdays. But as we can see, the CDF saves us an awful lot of time. Okay, let's take a look at one more type of question. When a paper cup is tossed, it lands upside down 20% of the time. The question is going to ask, if the cup is tossed 80 times, what is the probability it lands upside down at least 17 times? So what's our information that we're working with? N is 80, 80 trials. Probability of success on a given trial is 0.2. So, of course, probability of failure would be 0.8. What am I looking for? I'm looking for at least 17 winners. So if I'm going to do this, I have to think complement rule. If I negate greater than or equal to 17, I get less than 17. So greater than or equal to 17 is the complement of less than 17. So the probability x is greater than or equal to 17 is 1 minus the probability x is less than 17. But if we think about it, the CDF command that we just looked at gave us less than or equal to. So if you're less than 17, that really means you are less than or equal to a number. Remember, we can't be 16.5. So what would that be? What would that give us? That would give us the probability that x is less than or equal to 16. And this we can pull directly off Minitab to find that probability. So my command here is going to be CDF semicolon binomial n is 80, 80 trials. Probability of success is 0.2. Probability of success on a given trial is 0.2, and we're going to look at our output. We are interested in the probability x is less than or equal to 16, so let's scroll that up. And we can see on the top, this again is giving me the probability x is less than or equal to that number. So if we take it down to 16, the probability x is less than or equal to 16 x is less than or equal to 16 is 0 0.56637. So making that substitution, we get 1 minus 0.56637, and that gives us what value? That gives us a probability of 0.43363. Now, is there a way for us to check this? We're going to take a look at a Minitab simulation. We're going to generate 10,000 numbers in C1. They're going to come from a binomial 80.2 distribution, and we're going to put them in order into C2. And our question that we're going to ask is, how many of them are bigger than or equal to 17? So here's my syntax, random 10,000 C1, binomial 80.2, sort C1, C2. And I am looking for the probability x is greater than or equal to 17. So if I look at my data, how many of these numbers are greater than or equal to 17? Well, you can see 5,600 are less than 17. So how many would be greater than 17? I believe 4,400. So my result here is 4,400 out of 10,000, or is approximately 4,400 out of 10,000, which equals 0 0.44.
which is very close to our theoretical answer that we had earlier of about 0.43363.